Hello, 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 and I've got some advanced Yu-Gi-Oh! statistics that we're going to go over today. Yes, that's right. We're jumping right into some deadly statistics. These are all coming from questions that you guys have put out in my comment section on the YouTube, and I want to go over them right now. So starting off simple, how many normal summons is the optimal number? Well, do you guys know that it is eight normal summons? You don't want to run more than eight normal summons. Now, there's an asterisk there, and I'm going to go over that very, very soon. How many starters should we run in a one card combo deck? Well, that is 13. We don't want to have more than 13. Again, there's an asterisk, and that's because sometimes you might be running draw cards like Upstart Goblin, Allure of Darkness, etc. Even things like Triple Tactics Talent can serve as a draw to card. And what essentially that does is it lowers the maximum amount of cards you're running. You're not really as running a 40 card deck when you're running Upstart Goblin, you're technically running. 39 card deck etc etc so you can see here looking at the graph that the optimal number of normal summons before it starts going down eight is actually the most percentage you'll get in consistency and similarly 13 while it's not the highest it's at 87 percent consistency there you do not want to go above 90 percent because that's when you start running into what's called hyper consistency i'll get more on that later so if you're running a one card stombo combo for a 40 card deck you want to run 13 maybe 12 it's like exactly at 80 85 percent and for normal summons you want to run seven or eight again what percentage of consistency are we trying to reach 80 to 90 percent i talked about that because if you're over 90 percent consistency that's called hyper consistency and what that does is if you're hyper consistent you're now turning your five card hands into four or three card hands because you start drawing too many duplicates so how many starters do we want to run in a 60 card deck now that's very interesting because some people like to play these pile decks so how many starters one card starters that is do we want to run there that's 20 and now let's take a look at the graphs here you'll see here that remember we had 13 was our optimal for the one card combo and 40 card decks that represents this orange line and now this blue line represents 60 card decks and you'll see that right when you get to 20 cards 20 cards gives you that same amount of consistency about 87 percent so if you're running a 60 card deck you want to be running 20 starter cards to get your combo started and again that is also i should keep that an asterisk because if you're running a lot of draw cards you're kind of moving the goalposts you're not really running a 60 card deck let's say if you're running a bunch of upstart goblins or a lot of milling cards that's going to mill your deck so just be aware that this line graph is in a vacuum and it can move let's keep going here now how many garnets should I run in a 40 or a 60 card deck? Very interesting question. I get this one a lot. No more than one in a 40 card deck or two in a 60 card deck. But there is an exception and that's if you're running soft garnets. Now let's jump in to see what I'm talking about with that, right? So here is the odds to draw a garnet or a brick. Some of you guys might be familiar with this graph. Some of you might not or with these percentages. They're very important to know. What's most important to know is that one amount, right? That's you're running your drivers or just a lot of like Gem Knight Garnet would be the where that gets the name from. But or your bricks is another word for garnets, too. Some people will call it. So you don't want to run more than one because, again, that's 12.5. Once you run two in a 40 card deck, you're at 23 percent. And remember how I said you don't want to be above 90 percent. Well, when it comes to bricking, you don't want to brick more than like 15 to 20 percent. So that's why you don't really want to run more than one garnet. Now, the exception was soft garnet. So what do I mean by that? Well, let's look at Rescue Ace cards, right? Rescue Ace runs a lot of soft garnets. They can technically be used if they are drawn. So they're not really a hard garnet, but you would rather search them through the effects of Rescue Ace, how they get it normally. So soft garnets can be run way more because you can still have a use for them but hard garnets i would not run more than one again this is these numbers represent for a 40 card deck and these are your garnet percentage for a 60 card deck so be careful especially when we're using those blue eyes brick eyes right now let us continue what are some other questions i get 
what is a playset? Can you go over playset math? So many people ask me what's a playset. I talk about playsets a lot. So a playset is three of a kind. There's 33 to see in a 40 card stack and 23% to see in a 60 card deck, one of your playsets. Also, by the way, when we're talking about playsets, you don't want to run more than eight playsets because then what happens is, again, you start turning your five card hands into four card hands because you start seeing your playsets a lot. So now here is a playset, right? Uh, you're running three of a kind Ash Blossoms. If you're running two of a kind, I'm going to give you some math on that. Or if you're just running a card that is only one of. So, for example, if you're running a playset of Ash Blossoms, you have a 30% chance to see one of them. You have a 3.54% to see at least two of them. And you have a 0.1% chance to draw all three of your Ash Blossoms, which means if you add them all up, you have about a 33% chance to see at least one of your playsets, right? Because you might see two of them also worth even three. So that's very important to know. And similarly, when we're going into two of a kinds, you have a 22% chance to see one of them and a 1.28 to see both of them. Sometimes you don't want that, right? And then we're talking about a card that we're only running one of. Remember, that's the same math as I was going over in the Garnet. You have a 12.5% chance to see something you're running one of. And it's good to see the math is adding up and everything is being similar here. So now this is for a 40 card deck, right? Again, I just want to show you the math for a 60 card deck. A lot of people do love to run their pile decks and their 60 card pile decks. So again, you have about a 22% chance to see one of your play sets. If you're running that grassive screener in Master Duel, you have an 8.33% chance to see it because you can only see it at one. So that's a good to know there. Unless again, you're running some draw cards. The math does change a little bit. And here is your numbers for your two card combos. So that's always good to know. And that's again for your 60 card decks. Moving right along into some more questions and more statistics, because this is a good knowledge based episode here. Is it luckier to draw a Royal Flush or Exodia with five cards from the top of the deck? All right. Exodia is luckier, by the way. Now. I've done some funny bluffs with the leg of Exodia. I have some videos with that. So right leg of the Forbidden Moon is my favorite. But you got to remember when you're drawing off the top, you have a five out of 40 percent chance to get one Exodia piece, four out of 39 to the next one, then three out of 78 for the next one, two out of uh, 37 for that next one. And finally, to get the last piece of Exodia, you have a one out of 36 to get the good head. Right. So all together, when you multiply all of that together, the odds of just drawing Exodia straight off the top is 0.0001519%. And the odds to get a Royal Flush, by the way, is 0.00154%. So 151 versus 154 means it's actually more likely to get a Royal Flush, which means Exodia is harder to get. So Exodia is the luckier thing. Some people were debating and saying that Royal Flush is luckier. No, just pulling straight off the top exodia your first five cards exodia is luckier and that's in a 40 card deck too it gets even crazier when we do 60 cards but i digress is pot of duality worth it well for certain decks like flu absolutely now what is pot of duality that's the card that you excavate three cards from the top of the deck add one of them to your hand but now you can't special summon for the rest of your turn so let's look at the map right so when we're talking about cards like Fluanderies and other cards that don't special summon, maybe like some stun strategies or something like that. When you use Pot of Duality, right? Say you're taking the birds here. You're running about five to nine of those birds. And the reason why I call it because let's say you're running three Rabinas, probably one map because it's limited and one of the Advent Adventure things. And it all depends on if it's limited or not, because those cards kind of supplement each other and they fill in for each other, right? Like map searches, Rob, Rabina, et cetera, et cetera. So altogether, you have about five to nine of the Rabinas in your deck, even though you're running only three Rabinas, right? So when you use Pot of Duality, let's say you have five of those Rabinas, right? And that's including the three Rabinas, the one map, and the one advent i'm just saying if you're running with that 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 you have basically five rabinas in your deck so if you use pot of duality you now have a 37 percent chance to find that 
Robin or map or whatever. But similarly, if you're playing something, a pot of duality, and now you have a bunch of search cards, right? You're playing three small world, three Robinas, three advent, three map, one terraforming, right? Because it's not banned in the format you're playing. Now you're running about like, let's say 10, 10 to 15. And you can see here that it starts getting very, very likely that you're going to find what you're looking for. This is the pot of duality map. So of course, the more cars that you end up running, you want to run probably between 13 to 17 of a card because that 13 to 17, again, will give you that 80% chance that we're looking for. So again, make sure to increase the odds in decks like Master Duel, formats like that. It's probably not worth it to be playing Fluanderies because the Pot of Duality searches won't find it often enough. But in TCG, where it's not as heavily limited, it certainly is more worth it to play decks like Fluanderies. Let's keep going now. Here's a good one. Is Pot of Extravagance worth it? Will I banish the card I need in the extra deck? Well, you have a 40% chance to banish a one of in the extra deck and a 4.4% chance to banish all three copies. Now, what is Pot of Extravagance? For those of you that don't remember, that's the card where you banish six or three random face down cards from your extra deck face down. and You get to draw one card for every three cards banished. So this is if you choose to banish six and this is the percent chance if you choose to banish three and this is if you're running a one of in your extra deck so and this is if you're running a two of the math and finally this is if you're running uh, three copies of a card right so if you're running a one card copy like let's just say there's one hyper librarian and you don't want to banish it well the odds are really good that you probably will you have a 40 percent chance that you're going to banish your one ofs so if there is a one card that you only are running one of in your extra deck that you really need i would not use pot of extravagance but if you are using a card that you have a three of let's just say you're running three of a card let's say you're playing cash tier and you have three cash tier arise hearts in the format you're playing well then absolutely you can run extravagance because there's only a 4.4 percent chance to banish that to banish all of the copies so very, very interesting, very, very fun map with that. Let's keep going. What is my favorite card? So many people ask me that I have. It's, it's a, a tie probably between Noble Knight Shield Bearer, but mathematically it would have to be Nadir Servant. And let's go over the math on why that is. It's only used in about 13% of decks, but it does a couple of things that I really like. You see, when you use Nadir Servant, it, it, it's so versatile, and that's what makes a, a card so good. When you, you send a card to, from the extra deck to the graveyard to draw your, your card, I like to send Karura because then that's an additional draw. So not only does it get me a Dogmatica card, which gets me a card, now I send Karura, draws a card as well. Or I can send something like Elder Entity Natis to pop a card on the field. So already there's so much utility, I could draw a card. I could pop a card or I could send something like a Despian Lulu Lilith to the graveyard to at the end of the turn special summon a card. Now I could sp uh, maybe special summon one of those cards that will let me fuse on the opponent's turn, right? Ecclesia or something crazy that will make me uh, tribute and get a, a different card on the field next turn. So many different cards you could do. So I could special summon a card, pop a card draw a card. That's why Nadir Servant is by far my favorite card. Anyways, that's a lot of stats and statistics. I don't want to make this video too long. I'm going to have another part two where we got a lot more stats and statistics to go over. I love doing math and, and, and videos like this. So please like and subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.